program tonight, we meet the singing sensation from Scotland who took the world by storm. The king of the tabloid talk show, Jerry Springer, drops in for a chat. Fashion guru Gok Wan shares the secrets of successful styling. Amanda Byram tells us what she's been up to in the UK. And we discuss the issues surrounding bullying in schools with the father of tragic teenager Phoebe Prince. We'll also have music from the Irish House Party at The Wanted, as well as a very special performance from the Russian State Ballet. It'll all take place in the company of our very own special performers. It's the Late Late Show House Band, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And so my first guest is a Scottish singing sensation who became an international superstar following her appearance on the television programme Britain's Got Talent. Since then, her performance on that show has been viewed on YouTube almost 100 million times, and she herself has gone on to sell tens of millions of albums all around the world. The remarkable story of her life has been recently made into a musical, and we're joined now by the star of that musical, Elaine C. Smith, and of course, the woman herself, Susan Boyle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, welcome back to Ireland. Thank you very you're much. No, you're no stranger to the country, isn't that right? Well, I, I keep uh, visiting people up north in, uh, in Donegal, so I've got connections, yeah. And okay. what are the connections to Ireland with you? Uh, I've got cousins up north, yeah. so yeah. And is it your mum that's from, that came from Ireland? It's, it's on my mother's side. Yes. To the McLaughlin. So there. Okay, and when were you last here? Was it recently? I was here about maybe, oh, it was in January. Was, was a, I was visiting a friend in Carandona, so there you are. Yeah, and did you get involved? Did you go down to the town and say mm. hello to everyone? And... I went down to Bonkrana. Yes. We placed in there. And uh, I met, met some of their families. So it was really nice. OK, great stuff. And well done for wearing green. Does it look very <laughs> elegant tonight? Yes. Yes. yes, yes, splendid. Do you like it? Oh. In preparation for St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. One week to go now. Mm -hmm. um, is it strange, Susan, to see your life made into a musical? Not so much strange. I think maybe surreal would be the better word mm -hmm. there because I would last all of five minutes if I hardly lived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But when you, when you see the Elaine playing you and singing the songs and telling the story of your life, what does, what does it feel like? I would imagine it would be very emotional, mm. you know, and uh, Elaine's a, a, pro, a, a prolific performer, and uh, it'll be strange to watch. It'll be strange to be part of something. You know, I hope it's not that strange. No, I don't, I don't mean that. I'm trying to pick the right words here, Elaine, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> She'll kill me later. <laughs> but it'll certainly be, it'll be different, won't it? I mean, it'll be different uh, mm. for you in that, in that sense, I suppose. And Elaine, how did you end up in this role? It was her fault. Ah, um, don't blame me. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, I, uh, it's a sort of strange story, but I um, ended up, on, I was on holiday uh, at a friend's house in Loch Lomond in Scotland, and uh, mm -hmm. I got a phone call from, uh, suddenly my, my phones kept going with all these messages from journalists saying, um, what do you think about what Susan Boyle said? And I thought, I don't know Susan Boyle. You know, I obviously knew Susan Boyle, the superstar, yeah. uh, like everyone else. Um, but I'd never met Susan, although we'd been brought up only about 20 miles apart or whatever. But uh, uh, the, Susan had said in an interview when they were talking about the movie, apparently uh, there was talk of a movie of Susan's life being done in Hollywood. And uh, they said, uh, would you think Demi Moore or whoever it is is going to play the part? And Susan said, actually, there's a Scottish actress called Elaine Smith who I didn't even think she knew of my existence or whatever, and, and she sings as well, and I think she'd do a good job. Yeah. And that was, that was how it all came about. Yes. And I, I phoned a friend of mine who was in London, who's a West End producer, Michael Harrison, who's producing the show, mm -hmm. and we were laughing about it on the phone. He said, yeah, I saw it in the press. What was that about? And I said, oh, I'll never get it. Yeah. It'll be Michelle Pfeiffer with yeah. a bad Irish accent, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretending to be Scots. <laughs> and uh, I said, that's how Hollywood works. Sure. And, uh, and I said, but once the movie's out, we should try and do the stage show. That'd be great. Yeah. And he phoned me 10 minutes later and said, we should do it now. And I said, don't be ridiculous. 
And even then, I thought it would be five years away, and here we are. And here we, we are. We opened two weeks tonight. Gosh, it's very exciting. So terrifying. What, what, well, terrifying for you, exciting for everyone else. <laughs> I can what's, what's your role in the whole thing, in the, in the musical? I come on at the finale and I sing a couple of songs. OK, and can you tell us the songs, or is that the surprise bit? I Dreamed a Dream was one of them. Ah, yeah, yes, of, course. of course. I can't tell you the other one, that's a surprise. Can I ask you about the song, I Dreamed a Dream, and, and its significance to you and, and your life? Everybody has dreams and everybody aspires to be something. And uh, my personal circumstances weren't very good, so I tried to convey this through song. Mm. And I dreamed the dream seemed to fit in at a particular time. And when you say your personal circumstances weren't great, could, would you share that with us and tell us what? what... Well, I just lost my mom and everything was going a bit... Difficult. Difficult for sure. me. So I just thought I'd try and turn it round. Yeah. Tell me a bit about your mum's name's Bridie, isn't that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what sort of a woman was she? Well, Brady means ball of fire. <laughs> <laughs> was she a ball of fire? Well, don't mess. <laughs> OK. She was lovely, though. She was lovely. Yeah. And but you had a very special relationship with her, didn't you? And I was very close with her, yeah. Very I mean, close. Most, most daughters are close with their mother, though. And the, the, the doctor said, I have a quote here, that when after you were born, it's probably best to accept that Susan will never be anything. Why would they say such a thing? Well, they just didn't know what, uh, what I had at the time. I mean, hyperactivity was uh, considered something else then. Yeah. And uh, nowadays we've got more for that. So I can do a lot more than they thought. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, was, it, was school tough for you? Well... Everybody gets a share of uh, harassment at school, but I, th I think it got more than most because they had this secret weapon. You see, it was called bawling, roaring and crying. No, no, <laughs> so they discovered they could make me roar and cry. So that was that was the that was the draw. <laughs> and did you cry all the time then? Well, only when I was bullied. You see, in those days, I didn't do much about it. Yes, they didn't want to know, did they? You know, basically, it was something that was really not talk talked about very much. You know. Yeah. But I think uh, with uh, a lot of campaigns around nowadays, it should, should really be brought to the forefront. Yeah. There's nothing worse than not been having somebody talk to, a confidant. And I think if I had a confidant, then things would have been a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. it's curious. We're talking about it at length on this programme later on this evening. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things we found was that, just like you say, people need, particularly children, need to have someone to go to and say, look, it's not good. Did you have anyone like that? Well, I had guidance teachers. I had great teachers. Yeah. You know, but it's just, you need, a, need somebody out with that role, somebody you can really relate to sure. on their level, you know, and mm. uh, if they don't have that, they just, they just have a tough time. And why were you given a hard time? Well, because they could make me cry, and I was yeah. hyperactive, and I was also a bit slow as well. I was a slow learner. Sure. That was a label. Too, too much labelling went on. So it sounds. You know. Because we get to feel like raspberry jam. <laughs> <laughs> your, your faith is important to you, isn't it, Susan? Mm. Um, That's the backbone of my life. Is it? You know, and uh, it's kept me going on a number of occasions, especially during my mother's bereavement. I, yeah. I talk about it quite freely right now, you know? And were you brought up in the Catholic tradition? Is that the way it was always in your house? And... It was always there. You okay. know, it was very strong. We we're a very strong Catholic family. And I think you, you visited Knock in It's in one of the shrines I've been going since I was nine. And are you still visiting that shrine? I still intend to go in September, if I get the time. Yeah. So. Well, what do you get from your visits to shrines like Knock? Well, Our Lady is a kind of psychiatrist, if you like. Sure. She, she takes on everybody's problems. Now, they're not immediate the answers, but if you talk to her like your mum, she can, she can maybe find a way for you. And perhaps this is her way of finding something for me. I don't know. Yeah. And when you got all this attention and fame, do you think that Our Lady had a part to play in that? Very much so. You do? Very much so. Did you pray for this success? I didn't really... Well, nobody really knows how to answer that. I mean, the answer is I don't know. I didn't really pray for it. But what I prayed for was a change to my circumstances. Mm. Yes. You know? And when did music enter your, your world? My mother wanted me to be a professional singer. Yes. And uh, she was watching something on television some night. She said, that's what I want you to do. Will you do it for me? Yeah. I said, I'll try. I made a promise to her. But I didn't think I'd actually get the chance I had. <laughs> yeah. And here I am. And as a younger, like a little girl, did you, do you recall your first performance in front of an audience? At school, but I think I was a wee bit shy. <laughs> Everybody tries to cover up shyness in a number of ways, For you sure. know. Yeah. You know. What was your way? 
Oh, well, we might, well, you used to impersonate people on television. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Who was your best? I'll bet I'm not, but I'll get done for libel if I see anything new. <laughs> <laughs> so you sang a few songs at school uh, and, and, and then when you were a bit older, what, you went to what, to a local pub and sang a song there? And I used to escape. From? From the house and go to the Happy Valley. And was that the local pub? <laughs> and... I've just seen it in television. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I've got all the answer for I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you at that stage? Well, I was in my mid, my mid 20s, I would say, yeah. because, uh, well, this thing about a lady going into a pub on her own, unaccompanied. So I used to sneak out. Sneak out from the. Sneak out and go to the sing song every Thursday. <laughs> and would you get up and sing in front of the pub, the, the punters? If I knew them. Yeah. If I didn't know them, I'd sit quiet like everybody else, you know. <laughs> and what sort of things were you singing? I don't know how to love him. Oh, from Jesus Christ. Who That's right. Him. Yeah, beautiful song. Uh -huh. And it, when you got a round of applause, the clapping and all that, did you get a, a sort of a rush, a, a sense I of felt this? felt as if I could do something. Yeah, right. I didn't know, I didn't know whether to put it forward or not. I mean, I, I tried later on doing a lot of auditions for television. Yeah. And we, all, we always, make, always make clowns here, so I'm like, come on. Let's <laughs> 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 make some honeys. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a few bits and pieces, and you got used to the attention, it seems, to an extent. And, and then when Britain's Got Talent came into the, into the equation, where, where, did that, where did you decide? Where did the idea yeah, come from? Why, why did you go for that one? You're not going to believe this. Try us. I hope he's not watching. They'd be highly embarrassed. <laughs> it's, because, it's because I fancied Piers Morgan. <laughs> Is it? I don't fancy him. I like him. Because <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying, oh, she fancies him. I don't. I just like him. Mm. I says, no. he looks a bit of OK. I wonder how I could meet him. <laughs> the rest history. And the rest is history. I see what I mean, Piers. <laughs> <laughs> What has he got that you find so attractive? <laughs> Don't tell him. Don't tell him. It's before the watershed. Would you believe me? <laughs> no, we're, we're OK. You can tell me. I just love it. I just love the wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the last thing you'll see now, OK? OK, yeah. let's remind him. we we'll remind ourselves of Susan's audition. And oh, no! <laughs> ah, come on. This is great. You oh, like this? Oh, no. How old are you, Susan? I am 47. <laughs> That's just one side of me. Like <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've just been fitted for that wig and it ain't <laughs> How's that I'm look not... going for you? It's, it's very strange, actually, to put the wig on and the gold dress of it all made yeah. and, uh, and put that. And we, we've also got to do it in, in such a way that we can have quick changes. Sure. So uh, uh, it all happened so rapidly <laughs> to Susan, you know, to come out of that. But uh, I didn't look my best. That's all I'll say. What, what, <laughs> Susan, what, what did it feel like to... Because to, to, you had a sort of a makeover, mightn't be the right word, but you changed a little bit. Were, were, you, were you really up for that change or was it difficult I for think you? I think I needed it as good as if I was up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, black tights and that front didn't really good. <laughs> black so, tights and white shoes. Well, exactly. Eh? But, um, was a but did it did it feel good then on the other side when after all the fuss and even though the fuss continues? But did it feel good to have that change? I felt more like a woman. Did you? Mm. <laughs> I felt more grown up actually because when, when the, under the circumstances I was in, I wasn't able to really look anything. Yes. But I've changed a bit now. You've changed. Well, where there. did you watch that that night? Because obviously it was recorded. And then you well, that was in my house. And I, I was going to watch it myself because there's nothing worse than some, somebody with you saying, well, yeah. what's this like, you know? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. my brother insisted on coming round that night. So he came, he came round. He says, you're not watching this yourself in case somebody comes to your door. I said, oh, there'll be nobody at my door. What the one me for? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> just I'm watching away, you know, because the next minute, bang, 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 the door goes, you know, because these screaming kids at side road are screaming. I says, what are you screaming at? <laughs> <laughs> and what were they screaming at? They were screaming because I've been on Britain's Got Talent. Because yeah. all, all the neighbourhoods, the lights were on and everything, all the doors were open. The wifeys were out, you know. 
Mm. I was making all the noise, you know. <laughs> you became a superstar within days. Oh, don't, and... don't be a superstar, but, you well, know. Well, you did, whether you like it or not. It happened, <laughs> you know. And... Is that a label jab again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, indeed, but, but that's what happened then. And did, did you enjoy it or did it get a bit scary? It was a laugh. I was, I was a laugh. I mean, some of the things I came away with, some of them. It got scary when all the, the reporters came to the door. Yes. You know, first it was another, the, the first newspaper was okay, the first interview was okay. Yeah. Then there was another one, then the television crews came in and says, oh no, what's happening here? <laughs> then the satellite came, this is a laugh, this. I saw these big dishes outside and I said, I'm not taking my TV licence. <laughs> 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 they call me, I'm dead. <laughs> That's it, the TV gets the smile of white now, you know. You thought they were there to make you pay. I said, so this is, a, this is the, the, the measures they're, su they're supposed to be going to, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm as well with it, telly, you know. <laughs> then, of course, the, the, the start, they started putting, putting the, the programmes out, you know, the, the lights, the, they put all my electricity on. I said, do you, know, you realise I'm on the dole here? I can't afford all this electricity. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> you know? Well, what's been the most exciting bit of your life since that program? There's been so many. I mean, I can't yeah. really go into most of them here, but uh, probably, probably the most special is meeting His Holiness the Pope. Yes. You performed uh, for him, didn't you? So. Well, I sang during the Mass. Yes, yeah. You know, but, and why uh, was that so important to you? Well, my faith's very important, and he's a very important leader in my faith. Mm. But I never thought I'd actually get the chance to actually meet him. Do you think about your mum uh, uh, during these times of... of my mother would have been so proud. Would she? She would have been, yeah. <clears throat> it's very poignant. But I think she's watching over me. And I think she's encouraging me to get better and better. Yeah. And how are you enjoying life these days? Can I see it here? Yeah. It's bloody fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, Elaine, you, you, have a, you have a tough job ahead? I have a tough job, yeah. I mean, she's a, a remarkable woman, as, you, as you've all seen, and, and it's, a, it's a remarkable story. I mean, uh, Susan's story, it's not, it's not just the one thing for me that is attractive. It's not... It's actually quite a magical story. It's like a fairy story. And, you know, the questions you asked there about, about you know, getting a makeover, well, poverty has a lot to do with that. Sure. If people are living on the breadline and the door, you know, uh, if, if, if I was, if I, you know, wasn't as fortunate as I was, then, uh, then my hair would look pretty much like Susan's yeah. uh, did. Not now, darling, no. But, uh, but uh, then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'd okay. be in trouble for that. Stitch that head. Stitch that. <laughs> you know, most people, most women of a certain age, if you're affluent enough, then you can get your hair dyed, you can yeah. go to the beauty parlour, you can do all of those things. Um, but, but it's a huge responsibility because I, I've also always felt right at the beginning. I mean, anyone could go out and do Sing Along a Susan, you know, a musical about Susan Boyle's life. And so you don't need Susan's permission. For me, it was very, very important that Susan was on that journey too. And okay. that, this, that what we held is something very, very precious. And that we, we hit all the points in the story. It's not a sugary sweet story. It's a real story. It's not going for Phantom of the, the Opera. It's more a Billy Elliot sort yes. of view and of you could, life. You and could see that, that sense, that as, when you, that those opening bars and mm. the audience looking around as if to each other going, I'm so glad she's singing like that. Because well, before they were gone, <laughs> <laughs> you're joking. Well, who's laughing now? I suppose he said. There you are. Susan <laughs> Boyle, ladies and gentlemen, Elaine C. Smith. Thank you, Thank you both. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. You can see Elaine C. Smith and Susan Boyle in the musical I Dreamed a Dream. The Susan Boyle story is at the Board Gosh Energy Theatre, uh, formerly known as the Grand Canal Theatre, from the 24th to the 28th of April. And Susan's album, Someone to Watch Over Me, is out now.